Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janapallapa Gidi Vodapari Gopi Janapallapa Gidi Vodapari Yasoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jamuna Chira Panachari Jamuna Chira Panachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janna Kalapa Gidi Vadathari Gopi Janna Kalapa Gidi Vadathari Yasoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Jamuna Thira Panachari Jamunathira Panachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kyan Timidan Dasya Kyanan Janat Salakaya Chakshurun Bilidam Jena Tasma Isri Gurave Namaha 
श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापिता ये न भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ठटाटी स्वापदिक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीसुतापतकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णव श्रीरूपाग्रजाता सहकना रघुनाथ पीथम ठम सजीव साध सावदूत हरिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्णपदान सहकना ललिता श्री विशाखान्थम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीना बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका खंड राधा खंड नमोस्त थे थप्त कांचना गौरंगी राधे वृंदापनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुधे देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंश कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पथिथानाम भावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैता गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरि हरि हरे कृष्ण हरि कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरि हरि हरे कृष्ण हरि कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरि हरि नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्णप्रेस्ताय भूतले श्रीमथे भक्तिवेदात स्वामी नीतिनाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी भस्तारिणे हरे कृष्ण by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, our beloved Guru Maharaj. We are being blessed with an inconceivable good fortune to be together on pilgrimage in the association of wonderful devotees. At the eternal home, of our great beloved Acharyas, Sri Govardhan Hill,
when Srila Prabhupada was in his last weeks, practically last days during his physical pastimes with us in this world. His body It was heartbreaking for any devotees to see it. It was so thin and so frail. Many beloved disciples, God brothers, well wishers of Srila Prabhupada's, when they saw him in that condition, just prior to his disappearance, they would cry because Srila Prabhupada's body was transcendental. And it was the vehicle by which he, can, he could shower the divine grace of Krishna and Parampara throughout the world. And devotees loved Srila Prabhupada. Devotees understood in their heart of hearts that, Shri, that Srila Prabhupada's grace coming through his instructions and coming through his eternal person would always be with us if we carefully tried to serve him. But seeing the body in that condition was a very personal difficulty. One time one of his disciples, who was a scientist, started to cry when he saw Srila Prabhupada's condition. And Prabhupada smiled. He said, you are a scientist. You are a scientist. You require evidence. Well, I have been telling you for all these years that we are not these bodies, we are the eternal souls, part of Krishna. So now you see my body is almost gone, but I am still here. That is evidence, scientific. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada never stopped giving Krishna consciousness. Our beloved God brother Yadubar Prabhu, who is with us this evening, He's making a um, updated documentary film on Srila Prabhupada's life. But soon after Srila Prabhupada's physical departure, he produced and created one of the most beautiful films that has ever been made, your ever well-wisher which gives a glimpse into Srila Prabhupada's life and his contributions to the world. And toward the end of the film, Srila Prabhupada is laying on what we call in this world a deathbed. <laughs> he was unable to sit stand. He was just laying physically incapacitated. And His Holiness Jayadvaita Swami Maharaj was holding a dictaphone really close to his mouth. And Yadubar Prabhu was filming it. And Srila Prabhupada was translating Srimad Bhagavatam 
in giving purports to the tenth canto. Up until the last moment, he was simply giving Krishna. When he was in that kind of state just before, he was invited to London and to America. So he said, take me. And all the doctors were saying, no, you cannot go, you will die. Srila Prabhupada said, it will be a great honor to die on the battlefield. What was his battlefield? On a very personal level, we can understand that he was fighting against the Maya within each of our hearts. He was going place to place to inspire us to be spiritually strong. He was dictating his books to the last moment practically through his prayers, through his books, through his travel and his inspiration, through his brilliant organization of a society, a community of Vaishnavas. He was fighting the battle of, of illusion. The whole world, and on a personal level within each of our hearts, he was there as our general, giving us all the weapons, the holy names, the holy books, devotional service, and the strength to use them in the association of his devotees and so many of his other gifts. And he actually went to England, but he had to return because his health, it was impossible for him to go anywhere else. And he came back here to Brindavan. And he told the devotees, I want to do Govardhan Parikrama. One of his last most desires. The doctor said, without doubt he will die if he's put on an ox cart and such rough roads. This is one of the opulences of being so close to the Parikrama path. I get to share so much enthusiasm of the pilgrims, the bridge bosses. And some of Srila Prabhupada's devotees, they said, yes, it is Guru Maharaja's wish, we must take him on Parikrama. They got the oxen, they got the cart, it was all ready. And others, they were crying, begging Prabhupada, no, please don't go, you will die. And Srila Prabhupada smiled. He said, what better way will be there to die than on the Govardhan Parikram? But some of the devotees were thinking, we are fulfilling Prabhupada's order by taking him. If he wants to die that way, that is his decision. And others were saying, but still, he, out of our love, it's almost like killing him by putting him on that cart. It was a very difficult condition. And there was so much, at the time when Guru, there, when Srila Prabhupada was inevitably going to leave us, he created such tension, <laughs> a tension of love, 
everyone was, whatever um, opinion they may have had, it was with deep love for Srila Prabhupada. Because in bhakti, love is not always one way or another. Hanu Hanuman loves Ram by carrying out his order. The Gopas love Ra Krishna by having Krishna carry them on their shoulders. <laughs> Mother Yashoda loves Krishna by feeding him and protecting him and sometimes chastising him and tying him up to punish him. And the gopi's love for Krishna is to dance with him. To remember and embrace him in the core of their hearts forever. So Srila Prabhupada's churning, churning the love of his devotees in such a tangible, powerful way. And when his dear god brother Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj came to visit him, Srila Prabhupada smiled at him and said, Babaji Maharaj, see how much they love me. <laughs> And Prabhupada, in order to, because the devotees were crying, Prabhupada, you're driving us mad. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, to fulfill the wish of his devotees, he did not go. But with his morti, after he passed from this world, the devotees did parikrama around Govardhan Hill. Raghunath Das Goswami is our Prayojana Acharya. We know the story. He was the only child of Hiranya and Govardhan Madhumadar who were zamandars or land owners of a huge estate a property where there were hundreds thousands of people living and they were actually given the rights to tax these people in their own areas they were like kings and they amassed so much wealth so much property and Raghunath Das was the most important person in their lives because he was the sole heir to everything they had. And they were devotees. His parents would give donations to Sri Adwaita Charya. They would sometimes give donations to Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi. They were devotees. And their priest and their guru, Yadunanda Acharya and um, Balaram Acharya. When Haridas Thakur had just come from Benapal, he visited them in Jandpur, which is in the Adi Saptagram area, not too far from Navadweep, Mayapur. And there they arranged for him to be staying and giving talks on the glories of the holy names. Now because this is the Navadweep area, there were many scholars of the scriptures. There were many Babas and Swamis and Saints and Rishis. Haridas Thakur was from an outcast family. He was rejected, persecuted, insulted, almost everywhere he went. 
people would spread lies about him. They would try to incriminate him in some sort of activity so that his life would be ruined. They wanted him in prison. They wanted him beaten. Many wanted him killed. And all he wanted is to just share his love of God with everyone. He just loved everyone. Even those who tried to destroy him in every way, he only prayed for Krishna to bless them with love of Krishna. And he would chant 300,000 times the names every day. So Balarama Chandra and Yadunandan, they understood Haridas. He not only had knowledge, but he had realization. He was Nam Acharya. He was the living example of the greatness of the holy names. Because he knew no other shelter but the holy names. And he wanted nothing else. When Raghunath was a small boy, he came to he was brought to meet Haridas Thakur. And that had such an effect. All the jewels, the gold, the property, the power, the nice clothes, the fine foods, the beautiful ladies, everything that his family was providing for him. It was all insignificant distraction compared to what Haridas Thakur possessed. And Haridas Thakur was just wearing a little loincloth. He had no property, had no second set of clothes perhaps. He had no home. He lived in caves. But he had a taste for the chanting of the holy names. And in that taste for the holy names, he was experiencing unmotivated, uninterrupted, loving service to Sri Sri Radha Krishna. He wanted that. And when he met Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Shantipur, he became so attracted spontaneously. He just wanted to serve Lord Chaitanya as the servant of the servant of his servants. And time passed and so many challenges in his life. It's really amazing. I remember one time we went to Raghunath Das Goswami's birthplace. It's Krishnapur, which is not far from Chandpur. And there were hundreds of devotees. We were all assembled right there at his house. What a place. And I was thinking, I have been longing to come here for decades and decades. And I asked everybody who was there, you know, how much are you happy and enthusiastic to be here? And everybody was saying, Hadi Bol. And I said, Bol, we're so happy to come here. But Raghunath Das Goswami, he was, his whole life was trying to escape and get out of here. <laughs> and ultimately he did, by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, at Panihati. Nityananda Prabhu, great lesson for everyone. He had Raghunath Das Goswami do a very simple service for all the Vaishnavas and all the people to 
provide a feast of chitta dahi. Such a wealthy person. Chitta is flat chipped rice. It's the cheapest food. If any of you ever decide to be beggars, and you literally just give up everything and go out begging, most likely people will give you chitta. Because it's so cheap. You'll just throw some handfuls of chipped rice in your bag. I used to do that. And actually it's very, even though it's so cheap, it's really, really special. Because it doesn't spoil. You could take it into the Himalayas, you know, you just accumulate, you know what, and you could live on it for weeks, months. Just add a little river water to it and it's very nice. Providing you're not expecting anything more. <laughs> it's the way the mind works. Simple things could be so nice if you're not expecting something else. But if you expect something else, nothing's really nice. Yes? No matter what you have, if you're expecting something else, something more, you cannot be satisfied. But if you're satisfied with whatever Krishna's giving, you can be satisfied, you could be happy in any situation. Srila Prabhupada said when we become advanced in Krishna consciousness, all we need is the holy name, a tree to sleep under, the association of devotees, and a little prasad. And we're happy. We don't need anything else. Simple, simple living high thinking. Chitta, mixed with some water from a little pond is with no sugar or salt or anything else it's like nectar if you're hungry and you're not expecting some um, some mango pickles to mix in it or anything else. <laughs> if you expect anything you'll never be happy So he was, he made a chidadahi feast for everyone and he put nice, so many nice things in it. And because he served the Vaishnavas with such sincere devotion and he was earnestly praying for the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the original guru Nityananda Prabhu blessed him. And ultimately, Raghunath Das Goswami went to Jagannath Puri and became the servant of the servant of Lord Chaitanya. Swarup Damodar Goswami was Lord Chaitanya's personal secretary. And even though Raghunath Das was so educated, so wealthy, coming from such a high family, he, he was so humble. He always wanted to just serve the servant. Even when he had a question for Lord Chaitanya, he could have approached him directly. Lord Chaitanya would have welcomed him. But he asked the question through Swarup Damodar Goswami. Now that I have renounced everything in this world, I don't even know why I did it. <laughs> what is the true meaning and duties of one in the renounced order of life? Lord Chaitanya instructed him, do not speak prajalpa, gramyakata. Do not speak material subjects. Gramyakata is usually speaking about the faults of other people <clears throat> and about things that give us material sense enjoyment. 
Do not speak it, do not listen to it. Dress very simple. Offer all respect to others. Don't expect any respect for yourself. This is what renunciation means. And always chant Krishna's names. And always serve Shri Radha and Krishna. And in your heart of hearts, serve them in the land of Vrindavan. So Raghunath Das Goswami lived in such a spirit. Lord Saitanya was so pleased with him. He gave him as a gift his own Govardhan Shila. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he worshipped Giriraj in such a way that he had a single stone that was given to him by one sannyasi and he wore it around his neck over his heart. And Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, in the mood of Sri Radha, he saw that stone as the body of Krishna. It was her beloved Krishna. When he would go into ecstasies, he would hold the stone to his forehead. He would press Giriraj Shila to his heart. That Giriraj was constantly moistened by the tears of the ecstatic love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya considered that Govardhan Shila his life and his soul. And he only had one. He gave his life and soul to Raghunath Das Goswami. And even arranged the articles to worship and to offer Shigiriraj to Raghunath Das Goswami. And when Raghunath received it, he was thinking, in giving me Giriraj, my beloved Lord Sri Goranga has given me eternal residence at Govardhan Hill. And in giving me his Gunja Mala, Gunja is just a little seed, kind of a little plant seed that grows in Vrindavan. By material standards, it just grows wild. But for Raghunath Das Goswami, he considered, because Mahaprabhu given me this Gunjamala, he has given me the grace and the love of Sri Radharani in her service. And when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world, and Swarup Damodar Goswami left this world, Raghunath Das Goswami decided to come to Govardhan Hill to end his life. And he came with that intention. But first he met with Rupa and Sanatana Goswami to get their blessings. And they gave the blessing that you should stay with us because no one else knows Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's leelas like you do. You were his personal servant for so many years. You were the servant of his servant. You have the notebooks, the diaries of Swarup Damodar Goswami. You heard everything. You saw everything. Reside at Sri Radha Kund and every day recite the pastimes and teachings of Lord Goranga. Raghunath Das Goswami made his residence at Sri Radha Kund.
from this beautiful story, we get a little glimpse into the sacredness of Govardhan Hill. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Radharani and Gopis, they declare Giriraj, the king of mountains, to be Haridas Varya. The very dearmost, super excellent, best servant of Lord Hari. And the other day we spoke on Govardhan Puja of how Sri Krishna personally manifested his personal form as Giriraj. Govardhan is Krishna. And at the same time, Govardhan is performing the Leela of being the dearmost servant of Krishna. By Srila Prabhupada's grace, we have come. If our hearts are truly grateful, if we're really eager and enthusiastic to serve Giriraj by our eagerness to hear, by our eagerness to chant, by our eagerness to serve his devotees, by our eagerness to pray, pray for what pleases him. Giriraj himself, in the form of Lord Chaitanya, taught us how to pray. One of his prayers, Nathanamna janamna sundarim kabitam vajakadisha kamaye mama janmani janmani shwari bhavata bhakti rahoyta kitvai. So many people in this world pray to God for so many things. But Mahaprabhu is teaching us something that's revolutionary. I do not desire wealth. I do not desire enjoyments of the body and senses, even the most beautiful association of the opposite sex. I do not desire fame or followers. I do not desire great scholarship as a poet. I do not desire even liberation from suffering. My only desire, allow me to be your servant unconditionally, birth after birth after birth. This is the crest jewel of all goals of life, the Purusharta Siromani. The prayer for unconditional loving service. Samsidhyar Haditoshanam for the pleasure of Krishna. Giriraj is also called Kamagiri because he's especially merciful. And when we come here, if we pray with a sincere heart, Giriraj will fulfill our prayers. What will please him when we pray for bhakti, when we pray for praying, when we pray for the, to be empowered by, by his grace to overcome the obstacles of false ego, selfishness, lust, envy,